What's up everyone? This is Spooky. Today I wanted to create a Tekken 8 tier list for all of you. But instead of rating the characters on their overall power, I will be rating them based on how good their punishment is. The purpose of this tier list is to give you a good idea of which characters it is worth taking a risk against. You can also get an idea of who has very strong punishment and adjust to a safer strategy against them. We will be going in alphabetical order. So the first character up is Alyssa. Now Alyssa has a decent jab punisher that does okay damage. She also has a very nice 12 frame knockdown. And at 13 frames she has two different mix ups that she can utilize. At 14 frames she's got a juicy knockdown that also puts her in the destructive stance for the chainsaws. And at 15 frames she can launch although it is a two part move. Now from crouching, her punishment is not spectacular, but generally for me to put someone in the A tier, they've got to meet the rule of 12 frame standing knockdown, 15 frame standing launch, and also a 15 frame crouching launch. Now Alyssa does fit the bill for those, although the up forward 4-4 is a two part scaling move, I still feel comfortable putting Alyssa in the A tier for punishment in Tekken 8. Alright, up next we have Asuka Kazama, and her jab punishment is not very impressive, only being plus 6 and not doing too much damage. But she does have a juicy 12 frame knockdown, she's got a 14 frame knockdown, and she's got a very nice 15 frame launch. However, her crouch punishment is subpar. She does get a small combo for minus 14 on crouch, but she gets no real launch until minus 18. That makes me pretty comfortable putting her in the B tier because as I said, she's got the weak jab punishment and she also cannot full launch until minus 18. Up next, we have the new character Azucena. She's got some pretty cool jab punishes with a 1-2 that pushes back very far and can wall spot as well as a 1-1 one -one that puts her into stance and gives her a mix up. She also has very good launches for both standing and for crouching. And she has a wild standing 4-1, 11 frame punch from Crouch that is above average. Because she meets the rules of course, 12 frame knockdown, as well as having standing and crouching punch for minus 15, I'm very comfortable putting Azucena in the A tier for punishment in Tekken 8. Up next we have returning character Brian Fury. And one thing that's super nice about this character is that he's one of the few characters that has a 14 frame launch from standing. It does have some weaknesses. Weakness number one is that it's a high, and weakness number two is that it requires a little bit of execution, so you gotta watch out for that. Overall, despite having his very cool forward back two launcher, I gotta say this guy's probably B tier. His jab and his 12 frame punish are really just not that impressive, and that means that to me, he doesn't meet the rules of being an A tier because he doesn't have that 12 frame knockdown to go alongside his 15 frame launchers and his 14 frame launcher. Also, because he cannot launch 15 frames mid, he can only launch 15 frames high, if they're doing something that you need a mid punish for, uh, then he needs 18 frames to get a proper punish on that. So that's another big weakness of Brian Fury. Alright, coming up is character newly added in Tekken 7, Claudio Serafino. This guy is very strong and he's got his unique starburst mechanic as well. His jab punish is nothing to write home about, but he's got a great 12 frame punish that knocks down and gives him starburst. He's also got a nice down forward 3 1. It's a 13 frame move that can wall splat and makes it a good punisher, too, as well as having mix ups behind it. And he's got a lot of other tricks, too, including a 14 frame rate that gives him heat or a 14 frame rate that knocks down. Both great stuff. He even has above average minus 12 punishment for Crouch, too. So, all different things that make Claudio very impressive. I'm extremely comfortable putting Claudio in the A tier. He's got a little bit of everything that you need for punishing someone in Tekken 8. All right, up next we've got Devil Jin, and this guy's extremely strong. First off, he's got a jab punish that is hit confirmable and knocks down, which is typically a thing that only goes to Mishima style characters. He's also got a 12 framer that knocks down too, and he's got two choices for 15 frame punishment, the easy mode can cans and the hard mode electric wind god fist. He has above average while standing 4-4 punishment too for those minus 11, and overall, he's got lots of good stuff, basically. This guy is the first guy that I'm willing to put in the S tier for punishment in Tekken 8. He's got everything and the kitchen sink and then some. The only thing that he's got that is a weakness is that his 15 frame punish from Crouch starts in a tornado combo, the wild standing suit. But everything else about him is exceptional when it comes to punishment. Alright, next up I want to talk about Dragonoff. 
and uh, this guy is pretty good uh, he's very good offensively but he's not too bad on defense his standing punishment is a little bit on the below average side but he does have 15 frame launch from standing and 15 frame launch from crouch and he has a 12 frame crouch punisher that does good damage and knocks down so although he does not meet the rule for having a 12 frame punish that knocks down and the 15 frame punishers because you got that crouching 12 frame punish i'm willing to put dragon off in the a tier all right up next we've got eddie who was just released recently for tekken 8 he is new but some of his tools are very good he's got two different jab punishers with two different stance mix-ups afterwards he's got a 13 frame punisher that knocks down and he's got a 15 frame lunge from standing he also has above average crouch punishment at 11 frames he's got a two-part move He's got a special Punisher from Crouch for 13 frames. It starts high, but it can launch many moves for a combo. And in addition, he still has a 15 frame mid launch in case he needs it. So generally, Eddie's above average. He's actually kind of close to reaching the S tier, but because he doesn't have that, that 10 frame knockdown uh, from standing and he doesn't start till 13 frames, I'm gonna put him here in the A tier. But he's a contender for the S tier. He's actually got some pretty good stuff, especially the wild standing Punisher, the wild standing 1-3 from 13 frames, pretty nice. All right, so next up we have Feng. And one thing that's very cool about Feng is that he has a variety of jab punishers, including the back one he has, which knocks down only in heat mode, but still very nice to have a knockdown move available. He's also got the 13 frame knockdown shoulder. He's got launching for 15 frames from standing, and he's got a launch for 15 frames from crouch. Although he does not meet the rule for a minus 12 on knockdown. And so because that this is a tough one, I'm not really sure if he should be here in the A tier because everything else he has is so good or if he should be here in the B tier. I'm going to kind of borderline put him in the A because I think he's got a little bit of, every, of what he needs for everything, although he doesn't really have a very good punish for 12 frames from standing. He's got to use the jab punishes there, so keep that in mind. All right, so next up we have Huo. And uh, one thing that's nice about Huo is that he's got some jab punishes that don't really do very much damage, but they give him mix-up. Overall, other than that though, I would say that his standing punishment is below average until 15 frames, which is when he can get a launch. From crouching, he's got some okay stuff like the two-part while standing 4-4, but although he can launch at 15 frames, this is also a two-part move that scales your combo, which means that if you want to punish some bigger stuff, you're forced to crouch cancel if you want to get even bigger damage, which makes him a little bit technical and tricky when it comes to punishment. So because of that, I'm going to put Huo in the B tier. He's got some holes in his punishment, especially the standing punishment. And he's pretty tricky to get the most damage out of his punishment too. So because of that, B tier for Huo as far as punishment in Tekken 8. All right, next up we have Jack 8. And this guy is amazing at punishing. He has punishment from a minus 10 all the way to minus 15 standing. One punish for each frame, which is crazy, including a 10 frame heat smack and a high. He's also got at 15 frames, a down forward two launcher with damage options. And he's got pretty good wild standing punishment, including something for 12 frames and something for 14 frames that knocks down. And he's got the 15 frame launch. Basically, this guy's got a little bit of everything. The 10 frame heat smash by itself also kind of makes, already makes him a contender for S tier, but combined with everything else that he's got going on, easy, easy S tier for punishment for Jackie and Tekken. All right, the next one that we have coming up is Jin Kazama, and he's another powerful one. So first off, this guy has a standing jab punish that pushes back extremely far and can wall splat. He's got a 12 frame knockdown. You know how we love those from standing. He's got easy and hard options for standing launch, both with the can cans and the electric. He's got an above average 11 frame punisher from crouch, which is really nice. And he can launch 14 frames from crouch for a full combo, which is a huge deal. That by itself already will make Jin Kazama a contender for the S tier, but combined with all the other great punishers he has, easy S tier for Jin Kazama and Tekken 8. All right, staying in that Kazama family, we got another one, and it's Jun Kazama, and she's also extremely powerful. First off, she's got the up for one, which is possibly the best jab punish in the entire game. It does a grip of damage and knocks down. She also has some good mix-up punishers in the middle range, although she cannot launch standing until 16 frames, quite notable. 
Her crouching punishment is among the best in the game, period, with a 10 frame crouching move that knocks down, an 11 frame crouching move that also knocks down, and a 14 frame launch from crouch with a wild setting 3. These are all reasons why Jun Kazama is amazing, and even though she cannot launch minus 15 in standing, she's still easily S tier because of the amazing small punishment she has. What she can do to minus 10 is astronomical and makes her extremely powerful on defense. All right, and staying right here in the Mishima slash Kazama family, we've got Kazuya Mishima. And you guys probably know a bit about this one already if you know anything about Tekken. But of course, Kazuya, he's got the jab punish 1-1-2 that knocks down and is hit confirmable. He's also got an 11 frame knockdown punish with the back 1-1. One, one. It's sick. He can launch up to 13 frames with the perfect electric, which is mind blowing and powerful. And his crouch punishment is also uh, among the best in the game, but with the wild standing 4-4, four, four, that's above average. And the wild standing 1-2, that although it's a scaled combo, it can launch minus 13 from crouch. These are all reasons why Kazuya Mishima has amongst the best punishment in the game. He's possibly a contender for number one period when it comes to punishment. And definitely watch out for this guy on defense. Okay, comparing that to this next one, coming up we got King. Of course, we know King, he's really great with his rushdown as well as complemented by the throw system right now in Tekken 8. But he has a weak jab punisher, so watch out for that. His mid punishes are a little bit better, but also they do not no knock down, which is notable, although they give good plus frames. So to me, one thing about this guy is although he has the hop knee and he does have the ability to punish 15 frames from crouch, because he's missing that 12 frame knockdown punish and he has the weak job punishment, that means that his standing punishment is kind of eh. And that's why I'm comfortable kind of putting King in the B tier. Yes, he can launch 15 frames when he needs to, uh, but his standing punishment outside of the once you start getting to around 14 frames, it's not really that great. And even the 14 frame punisher does not knock down, which is kind of annoying. All right, keeping things going, we got one of the most buff characters since Tekken 7. It's Kuma. Now, Kuma, he's got a pretty weak jab punisher. There's nothing to write home about, but he does have a 12 framer that knocks down. And he also has a 13 frame heat smash, which makes it a very good mid punisher. And he has both a 15 frame punisher that launches from standing, as well as a 15 frame punisher that launches from crouching. Overall, he meets the rules of the 12 frame knockdown from standing and the 15 frame launchers. So I'm comfortable putting Kuma in the A tier for punishment in Tekken 8. All right, next up is Lars Alexanderson. His punishment did not really change too much from Tekken 7, but that's not a, not too bad because his punishment is very good. Although his jab punish is unimpressive, he's got the forward 2-4, which is a 12-framer double high that knocks down. He's got a 14-frame true combo starter from knockdown. And he's also got some decent crouching punishment too, as well as being able to launch 15 frames standing and crouching if he needs it. He's got everything that he needs to be an A tier character. We've already talked about that 12 frame standing knockdown as well as the 15 frame launches rule. He meets all those comfortably and that's why I have no problem putting Lars in the A tier. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the amazing punishment that Law has. Now, one thing that's nice about Law is that he has a damaging jab punish, although it does not knock down. And he has good punishment in the range of minus 12 to minus 15 from standing with a pretty good answer for every option. All of them knock down or do decent damage or both. In fact, I think they all do both. From crouching, he also has pretty good punishment. At minus 12, he's got the up four at 1 3. It's an interesting one. He's also got the wild standing 1 2 at minus 13. And of course, he can launch standing or crouching if he needs to at 15 frames. So, Law meets all the rules for someone that can punish a little bit of everything. In fact, he's very close also to hitting into the S tier thanks to all that nice middle range punishment he has. The 3 4 at 12 frames, the 4 3 at 13 frames, and of course, the 3 plus 4 4 at 14 frames. But because that 3 plus 4 4 took that nerve, I think that used to give a full combo in Tekken 7. Now I think it only gives a small combo. If that used to give a full combo, I probably would put him in S tier. But without that, I think A tier is a pretty good spot for Law right now in Tekken 8. All right, next up, we're going to get into Lee Chao Lan. And Lee Chao Lan is another powerful one. 
all right this guy depending on your execution he could kind of almost be in two different places on this tier list as far as punishment but he does have several amazing punishers including the just frame one three for 10 frames which knocks down he's got an 11 frame four 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 it's another just frame that one knocks down he's got the down four 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 that can give him heat and the four one plus two he's also got the back one one two that's another one that requires a just frame and he's got two different 15 frame punishers that he can utilize one's a just frame for extreme damage and one's a standard down four two for crouching it's the same deal he has a very good 10 frame punch for crouching that starts the infinite kicks mix up he's got the wild standing one two if he needs it he's got his wild standing two three and he's also got the knee to punish for crowd although the input's a little bit tricky so he can punish minus 15. basically lee he's among the best in game when it comes to punishment yes it requires the execution to do what you need to do but he's got so many good high damage knockdown moves and he gets even better in heat where you don't even need to hit the just frame all you gotta do is put in the inputs and you can get all the moves that you need so lee chow lan easy s tier for punishment in second eight okay up next we have leo and Leo's punishment is also pretty good. The 10 frame or 1 4 is not too bad. And she's also got a pretty good 11 frame punish. It does juicy damage and juicy plus frames, although it does not knock down. At 13 frames, she can knock down with DL4 at 1 2. And she's also got this nice little heat activated for 14 frames if she wants it, while being able to launch with down forward two at 15 frames. She has one of the best while standing 11 frame punishers in the entire game. The while standing four, one plus two, not only does it knock down, but it's a two part combo. It could potentially wall splat and it has a lot going on to it. So although Leo does not meet the rules for a 12 frame knockdown punish from standing, because she has the while standing four, one plus two, it's an amazing move. I'm extremely comfortable putting Leo into the A tier and she could be a contender for the S tier if she had a better job punish or a better 12 frame punish all right so next up we're going to talk about leroy and one thing that's very cool about playing leroy is that he has some good job as well as mid punishers that lead to his stance mix but their damage overall tends to be pretty subpar as well as giving no knockdowns although he can launch minus 15 both standing and crouching the options that he uses to launch do add some hits of scaling to the combo as well so because he lacks that 12 frame that knocks down and because his launchers, even though he has 15 frame launchers, they, they kind of nerfed the combos a little bit. I'm going to put Leroy into the B tier. He is kind of contender for A. If he had a better job punish or a better 12 punish, he'd easily be A tier for punishment. All right, next one is another one, and it is Lily. And uh, thanks to this, actually, I'm starting to understand why someone like me and the top players like playing this character so much. So first off, Lily has a 10 frame punisher in this game that knocks down and does juicy damage. She also has two good options for 12 frames, both a high and the mid, and they both knock down too, which is crazy. She's got a 15 frame launch from standing that's pretty good. She's got a wild standing four that also knocks down, and she can launch from crouch when she needs to. Basically, Lily has almost a perfect package when it comes to punishment. In fact, I would like to put Lily in the S tier. I think she's that good when it comes to punishers, especially the wild standing four that knocks down is almost as good as Leo's, and of course, the 10 frame punisher that knocks down is juicy. She's got a little bit of everything when it comes to punishment, and she's very complete, strong character when it comes to punishing Lily. All right, next up, we're going to talk about Nina, and she's she's okay, but she did get one new move that helped her out tremendously. So although her jab punish is kind of trash, she's got this new down back one plus two move. It starts high, but it's 11 frame punisher, 11 frame heat engager, and when you already have heat, it knocks down, making it very strong. She's also, she's also got some okay punishers for the middle range, and she can launch a minus 15, both crouching and standing. So because of those reasons, I'm pretty comfortable putting Nina in the A tier. She's got a little bit of everything she needs, just like the other characters. Her jab punish is not really that spectacular, but that 11 frame, the down back 1 plus 2, definitely helps carry her. And in fact, it lets her punish some things that other characters cannot for a juicy knockdown, a wall splat, a heat engager, or whatever else you might need. Alright, so next up we have Panda. And Panda's punishment is almost identical to Kuma's in this game. The only thing that's different is because Panda has a different heat smash. She cannot use it as a 13 frame punish the way that Kuma can. But she has a substitute 13 frame punish that can still use. That's not bad, although heat smash a little bit better. Overall, I think that I'm willing to put them in the same tier. But consider that although Kuma and Panda are in the same tier for punishment, Kuma has a better 13 frame punish when he is available than Panda does. So that's one little thing to watch out for. Overall, the rest of their punishment is very good and very usable. 
All right, next we got Paul Phoenix, and this is another guy that's pretty good when it comes to the punishment, except his jabs. So his jab, the one-two, is one of the worst jab punishes. In fact, the entire game is pretty trash, both damage-wise and plus frames-wise. But he's got this great 12-frame back one-two that knocks down. He's got some juicy 14-frame moves, including the back three and the forward two. And he's got a down forward two to launch from 15 if he needs it. He's also got a down a wild standing two that he can use to launch when he needs to from crouching. And he's got the up forward three four, the shredder style kicks two that he can use. So he's got a pretty good, basic, well rounded style. He easily makes him to the A tier. His only punish that's super weak is the jab. He's got the 12 frame knockdown, and he's got passable and service of wild standing punishment that gets the job done. All right, so next up we have Raven, and I'm assuming this part is not going to be a surprise to any of you guys either, but Raven has some issues in punishment. His jab punish is only okay, his 12 framer does not really knock down, his 13 framer doesn't knock down, and at 15 frames, he cannot get a true launch, he can only get a string or a, a small combo, basically. He can't launch until 16 frames from standing. For crouching, it's kind of the same deal. He does have a pretty good 14 frame while standing one. I think it's not bad. So that's the thing that you could utilize. So that's one thing that he has different from everybody else, is that he can launch 14 frames from crouch. But most of the rest of his punishment is really not very good. In fact, the, the while standing two punisher is kind of a thing that carries him a little bit. He's tricky to tier. I almost want to put this guy straight up in the C tier because his punishment is kind of like amongst the worst in the game. You can make an argument for the B or the C. Just keep in mind, that his stand punishment is trash. It's pretty terrible. He does have the wild standing, the wild standing one that punishes minus 14 front crowd. So he can launch that, but the rest of his wild standing punishment is also nothing to write home about and pretty trash. So I, I'm actually kind of comfortable putting him here. You could argue for him being the B tier, but there's no way that he's really much further than that. All right, next up, we got another Mishima, and it's Reina. So Reina, of course, she's got the 1-1-2 one, one, just like Kazuya and Jin do, although hers, rather than knocking down, gives her a stance. She's also got two nice 12 frame knockdown options. She's got the down forward one two and the forward two three at 13 frames. And she's got this weird two one move at 14 frames. At 15 frames, she's got both the down forward two and the electric. Just got a pretty good 11 frame punisher from crouching the while standing 4-4. Four, four. And she's got some tricks with this while standing one move as well, allowing her to go into stance and to tricks. And if she needs a launch from crouching at 15 frames, she's got that too. So she's got a nice little total package. I think that she actually belongs in the S tier. It's a bit of an edge case because the rest of the S tier, most of these guys have something really exceptional. Like Lily's got the 2-4 punish. You know, Lee's got his crazy stuff. kazuya has got his wild standing 1-3 at 13 frames. She's got her 14 frame punisher, that type of thing, right? But although she's more like an A tier character in how her variety of punishment works, she's kind of edging on like the crazy stuff that Lily or Kazuya or some of these other guys can do when it comes to punishment so i think that she makes it kind of like at the edge of s tier although you could argue that she's an a tier when it comes to punishment all right next up we got shaheen and he's another one that doesn't have anything too special he does have a very cool 13 frame punish with the just frame forward back two and if you hit the just frame you get it to be 13 frames rather than 14 frames which is pretty nice because it's a juicy damaging move that knocks down He's also got a down forward two and a hop kick that will punish at 15 frames. He can do the hop kick from crouch if he needs to. And he's got the wild standing 3-3. It's a weird little knockdown move that he can use from time to time. I think overall, his punishment is pretty good. But the thing that hurts him is that he doesn't really have a knockdown move at 12 frames. And to knock down at 13 frames, he's got to do a just frame move, which is a little bit tricky. So I'm comfortable putting Shaheen in the B tier. He's a contender for A tier. I think if they made the forward 2-3 knock down again like it used to, that would be a huge change. Or if they gave him a better job punish or something like that. Right now, I'm comfortable putting him here in B. All right, up next is Steve Fox. And this is a character that has some of the most miserable punishment in the entire game. He does have a pretty nice 1-1-2 one, one, that he can utilize, uh, but his 2-2 two, two, or his 2-1 only give him stance mix up. They don't necessarily give him anything that's a knockdown. His 1 plus 2 is not bad. This is actually a really good one, but he cannot launch until 
Woo! What can he launch? 17 frames? 22 frames? He can't launch for a really long time, which is a big problem. It's the same problem for Crouch. He's got the wild sending 2-2 two, two punish, which is a good little middle punish. He got the wild sending 1-2 out of 11 frames. That was really juicy. So it's a pretty good Crouch Punisher. But then the same deal, he cannot launch until full Crouch down forward 2, which I believe is an 18 frame move. It's extremely slow. So because of that, it's an easy C tier for Steve Fox. He has amongst the worst punishment in the entire game. He has a lot of trouble launching strings or has to punish with lesser stuff. And he doesn't really have a lot of good knockdowns in his toolkit for punishment either. All right, so next up we have another new character is Victor Chevalier. And uh, this guy has an okay jab punish. It's only like plus three or plus four. It's pretty bad on the plus frames. His 12 frame punishes are, the, the, one of them is not too bad. The 2-2-2 two, two, two is pretty good in that it puts you in the stance. But although it's juicy damage wise and it's juicy mix up wise, it, the stance only has around three or four moves that you like to use at the high level. It's still pretty good. Uh, he's got the 4 4 2, which is nice. And the 4 4 1, heat engage for 14 frames. And at 15 frames, he can launch with his down forward 2 or with his hop D, whichever one he wants. From crouching, the punishment is not really that spectacular. He's got the up forward 1 1, which can knock down at minus 13. And he can also launch at minus 15 with wild standing 1 or with the up forward 4. So his punishment is, is kind of okay. I won't go as far as to say it's lackluster because he is kind of contending for the A tier here, but because he does not have a 12 frame knockdown punish, but I said it's one of the rules here, and he doesn't have anything that makes up for the fact that he's lacking that 12 frame knockdown punish, like the, the, the up forward 1 1 and the wild standing 1 1, that moves okay, but it's, it's not making up for 12 frames that doesn't knock down. So because of that, I'm pretty comfortable putting Victor here in the B tier. He's a contender for the A tier, just like Shaheen and some of the other guys here, like maybe King, but lacking that. 12 frame punish I think this is the right spot for them all right coming up next we got Ling Xiaoyu and she's an unusual one when it comes to this tier list because she's gonna break some of the rules that I've mentioned now she has a pretty weak jab punish but that one does give some stance mix-ups she's got a 12 frame that knocks down is very powerful and just like Brian she also has a 14 frame high combo starter and it's easier to use than Brian's too which is nice unlike Brian she also has a 15 frame standing launcher with the back one plus two her while standing four also knocks down, which is really juicy. The only weakness I can really look at in her punishment is that she cannot launch crouching until minus 16. Despite that, looking at her list and looking at her punishment, I can definitely say that her punishment is better than Asuka's, probably better than Brian's, right? Like we talked about the 15 frame actual standing launcher, uh, probably better than Huo's, some of the other guys. So I'm pretty comfortable putting her here in the A tier. You could make an argument for her maybe being in the B tier, but I, I think her punishment is probably a little bit better than these characters I've placed here in the B tier. So I think this is the right spot for her. All right, we've almost reached the end, everyone. Up next is Yoshimitsu. And this guy is extremely unique. He's got this special move, Flash, which starts at six frames when he's face towards. And when he's in NSS, it's eight frames. It allows punishing otherwise unpunishable moves and also some strings. He's got some solid mid punishment too, although most of it does not knock down. And he can launch with down forward two at 15 frames as well as his hop knee. He also has, just in case he needs it, a 15 frame launch from Crouch with a wild standing 2-1. Trust me, he's going to need it. The main thing that makes this character much different from other characters is his ability to turn off some of your moves. Moves that will be safe against other characters are not necessarily safe against Yoshi. And even some strings that you're used to being safe are not safe against Yoshi. So because of that, it's easy S tier for Yoshimitsu. The Flash by himself combined with his pretty good middle punishment as well as his 15 frame launchers make him a very dangerous on defense. Fence. Watch out for this guy. All right, last but not least, we have Zafina. And the one thing that's nice about Zafina is that although she has a weaker jab punish, she can use those jab punishes to get into her stances if she wants. But that's where the impressive stuff ends, everyone. Her 14 frame punisher that used to be the down forward 3 4 got nerfed to 15 frames, which hurts. Her down forward 2, which is her main launcher, starts at 16 frames, which means that she cannot launch minus 15. She can only do a small combo on them with the down forward 3 4. And she does have the wild standing 1 2 to launch crouchers, but it's it requires a, it's a two part move. You know how it is. So it adds a little scaling to the combo. Your combo at the end is not going to do as much damage as it could if it was a single hit wild standing 2, like you see from some characters. So because of that, honestly, I'm going to put Safina in the C tier. You could make an argument maybe for her being B tier, but her, her middle punishment, her, her 
her jab and middle punishment is just not good. Her crouch punishment is okay. It gets the job done, but it's, it's pretty average overall. And then her standing punishment is so low. Not being able to launch until 16 frames. I mean, that's down there with these other guys that can't launch until 16 frames. You know what I mean? So I put Zafina in the C tier. She's another one that you can make an argument for B tier, but I think I'm pretty comfortable putting her in the spot. All right, everyone, so here it is. This is my tier list for punishment in Tekken 8. I'm sure I got a couple of things wrong here or there, but I hope that this will give you a general idea of how good your punishers might be if you're playing one of these characters, and also will give you an idea of how strong the opponent's punishment will be against you. Me, certainly, I learned from this that I'm taking way less risks against Lily than I used to because I didn't realize that Lily's punishment was so good, and I'm probably gonna take more risks if I find like a Raven or a Zafina or a Steve because seeing that their punishment is weak in certain aspects, I can try to take advantage of that and play two of their weaknesses and use moves that they're not very good at punishing. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this tier list, everyone. You could also tell me where you think your character should be on this list. So if you think your character should be moved around, if you don't like how I've tiered them, let me know and help us learn together, everyone. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I love you guys. Thanks as always for supporting us here at Team Spooky, and have a beautiful day, everyone.